Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. We're your hosts, Brandis Daniel. Hi, I'm Sybilla Moody. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies. So good to be with you today. I know. What's up with you, Brandis? How you doing? I am preparing for New York Fashion Week. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> fancy. <laughs> Is what I'm doing right now. So we're in the throngs of planning and finishing up. So it's good. And I'm trying to get things done like way in advance Mm -hmm. because I know that I'm going to be big and pregnant during fashion week. That's right. I'm trying to keep the stress away. Mm-hmm. So nice. That's my life right now. What's going on with you and Inspirific and the family? Oh, everything's going great. I am uh, still building on Inspirific and launching in September. I'm excited about awesome. that lady. She'll be able to go to inspirific.com and get some really valuable content uh, to support your lifestyle and keep you boosted. And the kids are good. Family's good. Hubby is on point. Everything's going great. Oh, I got some images back from a shoot I did recently with photographer, excuse me, named Richard. And I'm selecting images that I'm going to be able to use. Yes, I'm so excited about those. I love it. Yeah. So everything's popping. Good. It's popping. It's popping. This this year. So we're actually at the, we're beyond the halfway point of this year. We are. We're on to the second half of this year. Yes. So the first half was quite... It was a roller coaster. Yeah, it was a really... Y'all don't even know. That's going to be... When we have a brunch, we'll talk about, like, <laughs> the roller coaster of the first half of the year, right? Yeah. It was, it, was, it was a whirlwind of highs and lows, more highs than lows. Yeah, definitely. I think it's fair to say for both of us. Definitely. Yeah. So, ladies, we are back, and um, we've been having an amazing time uh, connecting with you guys on Facebook and getting emails about the content and questions that you have about what's next and what we can talk about. And um, this was something that we felt was a really, really strong piece that we need to tie in um, as we start talking a lot more about life and balance and uh, business and all the things that happen for women. We wanted to talk a bit about faith. Yes, my favorite topic. Yeah, I, was, I don't even know why we it's didn't start like, with faith. I have no idea why we didn't start with faith because it, it is absolutely one of my favorite topics. Mine too, and I, I, I mean, it's the core of of everything that we do and who we are and what even brought us together. And um, sometimes it's a tough topic because people think that faith makes you religious. And we're, I'm not religious. Brandis is not religious. We are very much relationship driven, which is different than having regimented laws about the way that we operate in faith. We right. are relationship with Christ, which is, which is different, which gives us the freedom to share our faith with people without judgment. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you don't have to be Christian to listen to this. You don't. You can <laughs> no. believe whatever you believe, but we're just sharing with you how faith plays a role in what we do and why faith is a center point, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, it's so funny because I was um, at improv mm-hmm. coaching mm-hmm. on earlier this week. And so I'm getting ready to do a keynote, which, by the way, guys, I'm not booked for a keynote yet, but <laughs> it's a keynote in faith. There's a key. <laughs> I'm preparing for keynote in faith. I love it. And um, so I'm meeting with with her, and and she does improv. She's actually a comedian. Mm -hmm. And we're talking, and she's like, so, Brandis, if there were, like, three topics that you wanted to talk about, what would they be? So I gave her two topics, which were things that are very typical that I would want to talk about. And then the other one was, well, first one was cupcakes. Second one was, (laughs) uh, I'll tell you guys just in case you want to know. The second one was taking risks. Uh-huh. And the third one, I was like, it would have to be faith. Mm. And she was like, oh, tell me more about this faith. And so we kind of got into this discussion, and I started sharing with her all these stories of my life and what has happened to me and how faith has played a role. And she was like, oh, my God, I have goosebumps. This is so incredible. Like, yeah. da, da, da. And so it's like, you know, you have to talk about those things because they just, first of all, they're inspiring. Yeah, You know, absolutely. when you hear somebody else's story of faith, it's absolutely inspiring. And, and our goal, our role is to share these types of things so that we can encourage each other. That's true. And I think in this life and stage we're in especially, a lot of people feel like certain people have faith. 
and other people don't have faith. Right. Or they feel like, you know, I'm not acting in faith on a daily basis. When Brandis and I were just talking about the real truth about faith is that every day when we wake up and we get out of bed and we trust our bodies and we trust the ground that we walk on and we sit in chairs and we drive cars and we walk in buildings that were built by other men and we eat food that other people cooked and we talk on phones that we did not create, we are operating in faith. Yes. It's very practical. So that's the thing. Faith is very practical. And I think sometimes, you know, it's very important for us to talk about this because a lot of times people are divided by faith and saying, oh, this person has more faith than me. Right. So they have the ability to do more with their faith than I do. That's okay. And I don't believe that. And Brandis, I think, doesn't believe that there is an applied faith. So we're going to talk today about applied faith and how you see it visible every day and then how you can grow it if you want to. Absolutely. So women, girlfriends, are you ready to dive right into this? I think they're ready. I hear you guys saying, I'm ready. Let's go. (laughs) So we're rolling. So Okay, Brandon, so shoot off for me. What is faith? Faith is action. Nice. And so, and you know, I think people think a lot of times faith is believing and, and belief is a part of it, but the big part of faith is actually taking action. So where do you think faith is rooted? Like, where do you think it's centered? Well, for me personally, my faith is rooted in Christ. Mm -hmm. That's like number one for me, because if I believe everything that he says, then, you know, I should have enough faith to kind of get me through. That's what I absolutely believe. That's what Mm -hmm. I hold true for me. And it's just played such a huge part in like every piece of my life. Yeah. Like from personal to my business, like the stories I have of faith in my business are just insane. Mm -hmm. Like, mm-hmm. so insane that yeah. I even look back on them and like, did that happen? Mm-hmm. And how did that happen? Mm-hmm. So what's funny mm-hmm. is my mom, when I was younger, actually used to call me her faith baby, mm-hmm. which I love. I should mm-hmm. Maybe that should be my nickname, faith baby. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, and that was because I just always kind of, you know, had this, this faith and wanted to take risks. So what do you think? I mean, if faith is an action, is it safe to say that uh, people who feel like they lack faith lack action? Is that what you're saying? Or what do you think that people miss it when they when it comes to faith? Fear. Fear in their in their ability to act. Fear is a hindrance to faith. Mm -hmm. And guys, by the way, I literally just had a scenario today Mm -hmm. come up that made me so fearful. It just kind of knocked me off my feet. And it was something so tiny, but it was just something that literally popped up that caused me to doubt. And the moment like I started to doubt, my faith went away. Yeah. I had to kind of like recalibrate. And it wasn't even an email. It wasn't even an email where they said, you can't do this. They just questioned something. Yeah. And that question caused me to doubt, which then like removed the faith. So let, let's go into that a little bit deeper because... One definition of uh, faith says that faith is the substance of things hoped for Mm -hmm. and the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a space where you are believing for a husband, Mm -hmm. just an example, like Mm -hmm. many of our great girlfriends are Mm -hmm. in hope of a husband uh, without the evidence of one being present, Mm -hmm. how does action tie into the faith part of that? Oh, Sybil, you need to answer that. No, no, I'm calling <laughs> on you. Because, you know, I feel like faith is sort of applied belief. Uh-huh. And and sometimes the belief will cause you to rest. But sometimes yeah. the belief causes you action. So I'm just curious, like, how do you how do you kick faith into gear when you feel like you're void of something, when you don't have the evidence of something? What kind of action do you take on things like that? I think you just prepare. You know what I mean? You prepare yourself for it. Let's say, for example, you know you've been hurt. A Uh whole lot of times and that quite honestly, relationships are going to be difficult for you. Mm -hmm. So then why not start to work on yourself, whether that's going to therapy, which you guys know, I'm a huge, huge, huge proponent of therapy. Uh So whether that's going to therapy, whether that's reading books, whether that's doing whatever it is you have to do to get yourself to a place where you can actually be prepared to be a wife, Mm -hmm. you know, in the same way that I don't know when this keynote speech is coming. Guys, feel free to call me to do a keynote. Hello. (laughs) Hello. But, you know, just like prepping for that keynote, Uh you know, like I'm I'm literally going to prep and have one ready so that when the call comes, 
I'm ready to do it. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like a prime example is last year I did a 21 day YouTube challenge when I was on YouTube every day because I said, you know, if I want to start doing more speaking, What's stopping me from speaking mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. Like, nothing is really in the way. You have a platform. Of, I have a platform. Yeah. My platform can Got be a YouTube. Phone. You got it, yeah. And I don't need a whole lot to, to record on YouTube. So it was interesting to me because literally when I did that 21-day YouTube challenge, I will say that was in like December. I think mm -hmm. it was like from November to December. And I will tell you the top of the year, I even had a contract for sponsorship with speaking engagements built into it. And that nice. had never happened before. Yeah. I've had more speaking engagements in terms of moderating and stuff this year than I've ever had in my entire life. Mm. You cannot tell me that those two weren't connected. Yeah. Then those people who booked me, they I don't think they ever saw the YouTube videos yeah. or even knew that I was doing a 21-day YouTube challenge. Wow. But it was something about the transfer that took place with you putting that action out there mm -hmm. that caused the other part of it to manifest. Yeah. So it was like God's way of delivering on the thing that you believed in, yeah. that you acted on. I truly believe That's great. that. I think that God waits, is waiting on us to make our move. You know, we're sitting back and we're thinking and we're planning and mm -hmm. we're getting things perfect and in order. But I, I felt, think... hold on, I felt a little shade. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Hold on, girlfriends. I felt just a teeny weeny bit of shade on that. And I think that it's coming from Brandis and I being pragmatic versus systematic on branding and how things should go. But I'm going to let that slide. Yeah, so you want to get things. Sometimes people want things to not just be perfect, but maybe they want things to be prepared to a certain point uh, that qualifies for the market. Maybe that's what she was trying to say. Well, they keep planning and planning and planning and planning and planning and planning and planning. <laughs> And I I think that, you know, sometimes you can plan for years. Yeah, it's true. And 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 you never take a step and like I don't really think you honestly see like what God can do until you take that step of faith. Well, it's true because one of my other favorite quotes that I love from my favorite book, which happens to be the Bible, um, yes. is faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So what that says to me is that you have the faith. You you have a belief that God is calling you to do something. You start planning. You think that's the work part of it. And you start planning and planning and planning and planning and planning and planning. And you might miss God on an opportunity to present that thing that you've been rehearsing or planning so much. And if you miss those moments where God is instinctively guiding you to do a certain thing, i.e. your 21-day challenge last year that led to you just opening up a window for you, if you miss that opportunity, you kill the very thing that you've been believing in because you kind of dilute it with your own belief in yourself mm -hmm. versus your belief in what God is trying to do. Right. And that happens a lot. And you see people, you you guys might have, you know, some of our parents might be listening or you might have parents or aunts and uncles who said once upon a time they were going to do, I was going to start a business. I was going to, you know, I was, I was going to be a dancer. I was going to be a singer. I sang in church and I always wanted to do an album or I went. And then because of their dead faith or their, the works that never manifested, they want to tell you all these apprehensive things about how you should live your life, right? Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Or if you're going to do that. Yeah. Or I don't know if that's for you because of, they're recounting the times that they didn't have enough action, enough works to bring things into manifestation. Yeah. This is going to sound a little bit creepy, mm -hmm. but one of my favorite things to do like when I walk is to walk near the cemetery near my house. Mm. And Creepy, for sure. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. That was creepy. Don't tweet that, y'all. She's not a creep. Brandis Daniel is not a creep, but, but that is creepy. But I'm going to tell you why. First of all, it's beautiful. <laughs> but the second thing is I look on these tombstones uh -huh. and just seeing the dates it makes life so real for me. Yeah. It's like every single time I look there and I see, I know, I don't know, William Pope, um, whatever, it's a 1973. Mm -hmm. It's it it just looking at that for me puts so much fire under me. I'm just like, we have a short amount of time here and whatever I'm supposed to be doing, I need to be doing because Eventually, it's like your life is just that 
your life is that dash. Yeah. Basically. Oh my gosh, it is that dash. So it's like, you know... It, how do we feel that dash? How, you, how do you feel? I actually... <laughs> I did a blog post on my uh, on my website uh-huh. about this. Wow! About the, and I even put like a picture of like this tombstone and oh all this God. stuff. <laughs> but I missed that one. I gotta go read that one. But I did it because it really does inspire me. Like you want to be inspired. You want to, um, you know, get over fear and start stepping out on faith. Like go visit a graveyard. Go mm-hmm. look at literally people whose lives have come and gone. Mm-hmm. For me personally, it will put fire under you. It's like mm-hmm. I gotta do what I was supposed to be doing. I have mm-hmm. to live out my purpose. Like there's no time to for me to be like wasting mm-hmm. and planning and planning and planning. Like I have to start taking a step of faith. And I think sometimes what prevents us from taking that step of faith is we don't have all everything in place yeah and the truth of the matter is you'll never have enough you'll yeah. never have enough money you never have enough resources yeah you never have enough like you know i shouldn't say you're never but most people never have enough well there's even you know you can look at and we've had clients before that are wealthy that can't figure out how to crack the code on something that they really believe they should be doing. They have all the the practical things that we all think we need to kickstart our businesses. They have all that stuff, yet they can't see how to make their passion come alive. Really? Yes. It's a very common thing that I run into. Wow. Yes. They're looking for, and so instead of them believing in their own brand or their own idea, they want me to put my belief behind it and make it come alive. Wow. And then when it comes alive, they want to say, I did this, I did that. Wow. I did, you know, they want to be able to represent it once right. it's alive, but it can't happen that way. In order for it to f- have its full vitality or have an actual breath, be a living mm-hmm. organism, mm-hmm. and it's someone's passion project, you have mm-hmm. to invest that passion personally. Mm-hmm. You have to pour life into it right. because it's breathing. It comes from faith, and it right. doesn't come from my faith or another person, a, a brand director's faith in your project. Right. It comes from you knowing right. deep down by, with the God in you that what you have been uh, what you feel very passionate about is meant to be accomplished. Absolutely. So it's it's one thing for me to believe in you and say, Brandis, you are going to be the best keynote speaker mm-hmm. at uh, this university, mm-hmm. you know, or at this organization, this company. That's one thing. But there's another thing when you're living off of your own belief. That's the manifestation part. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's not about resources. No, Faith is about understanding God's ability to bring all those things forward when you need them. Yes. So literally, I've learned in my own experience with faith that every time I thought I had an insufficiency and or I had something that was keeping me from manifesting, I was sitting in the middle of every single resource I've ever needed. Say it again. I feel like you need to say that. Every (laughs) single time (laughs) that I thought that I was insufficient or that I was lacking something that I needed to make a dream or a vision Mm -hmm. come to pass, I was sitting in the middle of every single resource. And it literally would be a matter of me not having eyes to see that, oh, this person is a resource. This computer is a resource. Google is a resource. You know, my Rolodex or whatever it is, there are resources all around me, but having the eyes to see it. And what I've learned is that we lack nothing. Right. Not one of us lacks anything we're completely equipped and and loaded every day with the benefits that we need to manifest everything for that day. That's so true. Everything. That is so true. And, we create lack. And and it's true. And yeah. part of and part of it is going and and showing up. Being there, being part, present. Part yeah. of it part of it is just showing yeah. up. Yeah. What's an experience in your life? I guess maybe one of your most memorable experiences where faith played such a huge role girl y'all ain't ready for this but this is a long story but i gotta i'm gonna abbreviate it the birth of my daughter dylan Mm. um my pregnancy was very complex and um it after like my six week appointment um actually no take that back it wasn't six week it was the 12 week or something like that. I think she was, I was three months pregnant. They'd done blood tests and screenings and she tested positive for a trisomy 18, which is a chromosomal defect. The effects are webbed feed, enlarged organs, 
a vegetated state ultimately. So wow. the likelihood of her living was one in 60. Wow. The average person is like a one in 350 or something like that, which is, you know, one in 350 is sort of a, a dangerous stat. One in 60 is deadly. So none of it is at this appointment when the doctor's explaining this to me, she tells me, you're going to just say goodbye early. And wow. Because the likelihood was so high of her being born with this defect, and which meant that I think it's one in 10 children live the first week of their life and one in five live beyond the, the first year of their life. Wow. And if they are born with this disease, they require a lot of nursing care. It's very expensive, the medical fees, and most families can't afford the care. Wow. So um, the doctors told me to say goodbye early, and I said no. <laughs> and so, you know, she kept, the doctor kept warning me, you know, you do understand that the likelihood of her being born with this disease is, is high. I mean, there's... We've never seen a one in 60 here. So I said, well, all I need is, I just need one healthy baby. Wow. I, and I'm going to go for it. I'm going to believe. They took me to a genetics counselor. Kwaku and I went, and the counselor had to explain to us, you know, what it is and saying goodbye early and why they felt like it was critical for us to do it. And we told her, no, by our faith, we believe that she's going to be born the way God created her. Wow. And like the way we believe we see her in our hearts mm. and we're not giving up on her. And, um, I know it, it was very intense, guys, because, you know, in that moment, my husband was the most supportive person he could be. But I felt very responsible. My body is carrying this baby and I'm responsible for ensuring her health, her livelihood. So the weight of that emotional journey was really tied to me and my life and whether or not I believed I was capable of seeing her the way you see her today. And so in that of it is, we, we, we were required every month to go to an anatomy appointment to get an ultrasound. And this was like the most amazing time for us because we could see her, they were monitoring her. But Dylan, my daughter, has, you know, she has her funny ways and she would dodge the technicians and turn her back and she wouldn't let them get measurements. And so we went months just kind of like, Lord, we're believing you, we're trusting you that she's going to be healthy. And uh, we had to decide that right. our faith was going to be responsible for delivering the baby that we wanted. Not the baby that the doctors thought we would have, right. but the child that we knew we deserved by faith. Our faith was whole enough to bring that to pass. Where if I believe in my faith that, that much, my relationship with God has to be so tight that I know nothing can sever it. Right. So... We're going through this, and by the fourth anatomy appointment, finally, Dylan turns, and they're measuring all her parts, and everything's measuring fine, and we're excited. But the last thing that they need to see is whether or not her feet and her hands are webbed, because that's one of the key indicators. If Even if the organs are normal, webbed feet, webbed hands, hands will let you know, because the organs can grow abnormally as they develop. So... She wouldn't turn, she wouldn't turn, she wouldn't turn. And I just got so intensely nervous and scared on the table. And I was like, no, I declare by faith that Dylan will turn and she will show us all 10 fingers and all 10 feet, all 10 toes. Right. And so, um, and so Kwaku and I just kind of rubbed on the belly and the, doc the technician was giving up and she was like, well, you know what? Maybe it's not today. And we were like, no, it's today. We're going to see it today. And do you know, after we rubbed and we said, come on, Dylan, we just want to see, mm -hmm. you know, hands and toes. This little girl turns over and she raises this little baby fist up and does like pop. And she pops her little <laughs> fingers wide open. And wow. there were, and it was like she held it up long enough for us to count. Like, wow. oh my goodness. And Kwaku and I just burst into tears wow. because we could not believe that she did that. And I felt like that was her way and God's way of, of, of her showing us and saying, relax. I'm okay. Right. It's okay. Right. We're going to do this right. together. We're going to do this. And I, you know, that moment charged me up so much. But then as we got through the pregnancy, I had, you know, pre, pre, um, pre labor symptoms very early. I had this diarrhea that rushed me to the hospital and they thought I was going to have to deliver at six months. And I told them, no, I was like, I will carry her full term and deliver a healthy whole baby. So I had, I had to resist everything that the doctors were saying because my faith was telling me to do otherwise. Wow. And it was only because I had the faith to do it. It wasn't my mind. It was the Holy Spirit showing me that I needed to trust and to right. be patient and drink water right. and relax and walk right. and calm, you know, get my heart beat down and get the blood pressure down and all these other things. 
then at the 36 week appointment, the mor- the morning of the 36 week appointment, Dylan's head is in upper position. She's still not in position. So they're saying she'll turn by 38 weeks or so. That afternoon, I was in a near fatal car accident. Oh my God. We got hit, you know, from the side in a car. A car flipped and turned over, hit on Sam's passenger side in the wow. back seat. And all I heard was Sam scream. And I look back and he's waking up from this nap, but the car is spinning. And uh, Sam and I are rushed to the hospital. And the, the passengers from the other vehicle were rushed to the hospital. And when we got to the hospital, they couldn't find Dylan's heartbeat. And oh, it God. took about an hour or so more before they were able to locate it because they couldn't locate her heartbeat. And I just kept, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. you got to find her heartbeat. Right. Um, and they, you know, at this time they took Sam away, but her heartbeat recovered. Wow. And, <laughs> and, and my little baby boo was there. And um, I was on bed rest for the next four weeks or so. What my version of bed rest. Okay. And, and we delivered her full term. And she yes. had 10 fingers, 10 toes, normal heart, normal organs. Wow. She's now three. She wasn't supposed to live past the first 10 days or the first wow. year. She's three. She's smart. She's beautiful. She's, wow. she's at, whenever I look at her, I'm reminded of God's glory and my faith in God right. and what faith can do. Every wow. single time I look at her. Wow. And I, I'm reminded of how people can think they know a certain thing about you or they can have an idea about what the outcome will be. Right. But God's word is always greater than that. Right. And if we believe it, it doesn't make sense unless we believe. If we believe God's word, then we can get the prevailing victory. But if we don't believe it, if we trust what people say, I would have lost a daughter. Wow. And she, I would have lost and a daughter. She is so sad. She's so full of life. You and guys, so- <laughs> when you meet my daughter, you will you will understand. And from the womb, little I always knew baby. she's a fiery little girl. This little girl is decisive. This little girl is strong. She's resilient. Wow. She's energy. She's charged up. I always knew this about her. And to this day, my daughter is all those things. Wow. And I know, obviously, there's a great calling on her life. Yeah. There's something she's meant to manifest. You know, it's a great calling or responsibility for us to deliver on that. Right. But it was only by faith. There was wow. no other way we could have made it. And even wow. our doctors couldn't explain. Well, medically, we can't explain. I know. You can't. Right. It's not. This is beyond medicine. Wow. This is God. And, and the beautiful thing about that is the next time another woman comes in, Absolutely. they have your story. They have our story. They have our story. And, I, you know, I tell as many moms about this, if, if they've ever gotten a, a diagnosis, because it's according to our faith. And I believe that God prepares us and gives us the wisdom that we need to see how to operate in scenarios. Right. Like, you know, that's, we need to know when God is hearkening for us to do certain things. Right. And God was not leading us to say goodbye early. Wow. So we did not do it. And I'm grateful. Wow. Yes. Sybil. Girl, I'm telling you. You're a mess. I know y'all. She's all crying. And I, and I (laughs) cried, I've cried so many tears over it and I've shared it a, a, a lot of times, but you know, just, Everyone, everywhere we go, you're going to have to share one of your stories, but we all need an example where we can look over and see something and say, look at what, look at what faith did. Right, right. We should be able to do that. Right. You need to have something in your life that's near to you right. that says, look at faith. Right. Look at faith. Look at right. my, what God did right. with, you know, what my faith in God and what God did with my faith. Absolutely. What about you? Girl, I got to pull myself together. <laughs> you need to give me a minute. <laughs> Wipe your tears. You gotta give yeah. me a minute. I gotta recalibrate. No, after I know. That. I know. It was a complex time. And the and other I remember, thing, like, I don't think I knew the whole story. I yeah. remember you sending me a text message and saying, "Pray." Yes, like, pray. And I missed and your I show because we I was sick. But I do not. I didn't know like the every. Depth. You know, I didn't know everything. Well, you, the other thing about faith, I feel like sometimes there's a level of sensitivity where you have to be very conscious of what you deliver on, yes. how much you speak yes. about things, yes. what you say. I agree. And in that scenario, God led us to have four people um, that we were able to share with that were standing in agreement with us. And after we decided on what it was going to be, we didn't talk about it anymore. Right. right. We just let it happen. Right. 
There was a lot of hard nights. Right. There was a lot of me saying to myself, I can do this. I can do this. Right. I'm enough. Right. Right. There's enough in me to make, like, I can deliver. Right. I'm not quitting. I right. won't quit on her. Right. And I'm sure there were times where there were doubts. Lots of doubts. That came in. Lots of doctor's appointments where yeah. I was like, this is a lie. This yeah. is a lie. Yeah. This is not yeah. God's word. I do not. And I had to just keep telling myself it's a, like sometimes a crazy it's lady. It's literally a fight. It's a fight. Sometimes it's absolutely a fight. Complete war. I knew wow. at that point that if I gave up on her, I was giving up on God's ability to do great things. Right. Because for me, that was the greatest thing right. I've seen. Oh, so Yeah. Oh. Y'all probably in your car or your <laughs> treadmill crying. You gotta wipe your tears so you can oh. drive. <laughs> but it's true. But we all have those examples. It's and I'm sure, true. girlfriends, oh. you have examples where something extraordinary took place. Yeah. And you didn't know how, what, when, where, but you just knew you needed to see something extraordinary happen. Yeah. And suddenly, this yeah. thing happens. And it shows you that that belief power is real. Yeah. That's faith. It's so true. It's faith. It's so true. And I think that, like, as we live, especially as entrepreneurs, as women, as moms, as wives, we need to keep ourselves charged up with our own examples and with other people's examples. And we need to participate in people's faith. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So yeah. we, we see our friends and there might be times when they're believing God for something and we have something that can add value to their faith. Mm -hmm. It could be money. It could be time. Mm -hmm. It could be a prayer. It could be a hug. Mm -hmm. It could be mm -hmm. some clothes. It could be a trip. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, we need to participate because we need to help reinforce the idea that faith works. Absolutely. We have to do that for each other. Absolutely. I think that's what's been so great about our friendship, Brandis and I, our, our girlfriendship, I should say, is <laughs> yes. that we continue to reinforce each other's faith. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I look at you and I'm like, I can do anything because Brandis is doing everything. Girl, no. I, <laughs> and I can remember times when yeah. you were figuring it out and God delivered. Yeah. And it reinforces for me that when I'm in stages of, thing, of a situation and I'm figuring it out, if I just sit back and rest in it, God's deliverance like brings me something right. that I need. So, but I'm st it's still so hard for me to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you so, gotta recover. I'm like I'm trying to recover. I All I can think of little Dylan. I oh, know. I know. Uh, I'll share a video actually um, on our Facebook page um, that I did with our church that okay. kind of tells the story a bit more. And I tell the story all the time because women get so afraid when they're pregnant, and there is nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, it's all false evidence. It's so That's true. That's all it is. Yeah. And maybe that's why I'm so emotional, because I'm pregnant You're now. pregnant. You're <laughs> pregnant. And you know what it feels like to feel the weight of carrying a life. Yes. And you're like, what can I do? How can I eat? What can I... And, and sometimes you feel like, in that situation, I felt like I couldn't do anything. Yeah. There was nothing I could do but trust. Yeah. And that was enough. Yeah. Y'all, my makeup is a mess. <laughs> I'm so happy that this is not being filmed right now, because... <laughs> Mascara is like all, all over my over. face. It's all over. It's all over. Oh. But that's the beautiful thing I think about faith, Brandis. What do you, you think? Like faith gives you joy and it does reassurance. It does. I feel like if nothing else is a testament of faith, my life should be a absolutely should be it for anyone mm -hmm. because I'm from Memphis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Proudly. Yes. Memphis girl. Yes. But I'm from <laughs> Memphis. And, you know, I, I'll never forget when I, I may, I think I may have said this on another podcast too. I had all these dreams of what I wanted to do when I moved to New York. And um, there was a guy that I was kind of sort of dating at the time. Not really, but mm -hmm. kind of like, I really liked him a lot. I think I liked him more than he liked me, which by <laughs> the way is never good. Right. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I remember him saying he was from New Jersey, which literally he was like 30 minutes outside of New York. Mm. And him hearing me talk about all these things I wanted to do in New York, he was just like, I mean, like, what are you thinking? Like, you, you like people don't just come to New York and just do those things. Like, 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 I don't know what you think New York is. And he was so negative wow. uh -huh. about it. So negative about it. Wow. And for me, I was just like, I don't understand why not. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't, 
understand why like that's why I'm moving there like yeah. I'm not moving to New York to go go take, work take some job, do something I can want. do in Memphis yeah. wow. I just so I just feel like my life is like such a reflection of faith because yes. from moving here to starting a business here to the fact that my very first sponsor was a major fortune 500 co- mm-hmm. company mm-hmm. and I'll never forget the time I did the fashion show at Jazz at Lincoln Center for the mm-hmm. first time. And, you know, for those of you who don't live major. in New York, that is probably one of the most premier venues mm-hmm. in the entire city. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have, like, two pennies. And so I'm going into this venue, and I go in there, and I walk in there, and it's so absolutely stunning and beautiful. And this guy, by the way, I like saw them like sweet talked and charmed myself into this building, by the way. The guy was like, just please let me go in for five minutes. He's uh-huh. like, no, you're supposed to have like an official walkthrough. I was like, please, please. Right. And so I get in there and it wasn't meant for me to be in there with like these official people. Mm-hmm. It was meant for me to be in there with this guard. So the moment I walk in there, I am screaming, this is it. This is it. This is my thing. You don't understand. Wow. This is my thing. And he's like laughing at me. I was like, you don't understand. This is it. This is where I'm having the show. And it was literally immediately, I was like, that's it. Like, I didn't even look at another venue. Yeah. Had no idea. Well, I knew how much it cost, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know the, I knew how much the deposit was, but I didn't know Uh, the entire cost. Oh. And even (laughs) the deposit, I didn't have. Yeah. And I just think back to that. I'll never forget the lady discounted the deposit for me. Wow. I remembered I had money in like an IRA account, Mm -hmm. like like for half that covered half the deposit. Mm -hmm. And then the other half of the deposit, I went to bed that night and I prayed like, okay, how do I come up with this other half of the deposit word? And it was like, God prompted me to call two people. One was my aunt and um, she didn't have it at the time. And I called my uncle. Me, first of all, I mean... Me and my uncle ain't like we that tight. Mm-hmm. You know, I love him. <laughs> yeah. But we're not like that's somebody I talk to once a week right. or whatever. And I have no idea what made him believe in me to say, I will let you borrow this money. It was Something not a was small there. chunk yeah. of change. Uh-huh. And he said, okay. Wow. And sent me the check. I told him I would pay him back. And I had no idea how I was going to pay him back. And I went and put down a deposit. Nice. But when I put down a deposit, <laughs> you didn't still know the total. I had seventy five thousand more dollars to pay. So oh my goodness, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> and I just remember like thinking, how in the world am I coming up with the rest of this money? But wow. not really worrying about it, kind yeah. of moving forward. Yeah. And the the wow. amazing thing to me about I talk about jumping the cliff a lot, and the amazing thing to me about when you take a big leap of faith or a big jump, all that momentum, as you're jumping, you have momentum, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're like moving so fast and yeah. through so many obstacles in faith mm-hmm. that God starts to send everything that you need. Right. So people are so excited by your momentum that they want to jump on board. Mm-hmm. And so I had all these people that were helping me mm-hmm. with this. And I think they probably knew I didn't have the money because... I don't know. Maybe they didn't know. <laughs> but um, I was just moving forward, and it was like everything I was needed, he was sending except uh, except for the money. <laughs> so, and so the money. Jesus, I just want to remind you. <laughs> and so even just the way that, you know, I called some really great girlfriends together. Mm-hmm. I gave them an agenda, my agenda I had created, which was basically all my problems. <laughs> and I was like, I needed to have a meeting with them. It was very important. Yeah. And we sat at my living room table and they went through the agenda. And at first, of course, the first thing on the agenda was this amount of money that I needed. I hope I still have that agenda somewhere. I need to look for it. But anyway, it was the amount of money that I needed. And and so we kind of went through it and they were like, okay, you have to go to this particular sponsor because this is the only sponsor you've ever had. So they already at least have bought into your vision a bit. So you have to go to them and ask them to be a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know if I can ask somebody for this amount of money in sponsorship. They're like, oh, actually you have to actually double that. Okay, so the benefit of having girlfriends that are bosses. (laughs) 
<laughs> that they think bigger than you. Yeah. yeah. So I just remember that, and I remember, and they were like, and you can't sound like you're afraid to ask yeah. for it. Like you have to sound like like the money is yours. Yeah. And I remember my, one of my girlfriends, Helen, called me the next day, and she's like, okay, like let's go over this. Like I'm him, you're you. Let's go through this. I love it. And then, yes. and and she'd say, I'm not buying it. Don't buy it. Not really feeling it. Like I try to get and it. I, yeah. And I kept going. And she was, and I got to a place where she was like, okay, I can buy that. You're good. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Like that was it. Like I, I like it. it was such a short phone call before yeah. she went to work that morning. And I had the conversation with the company. Um, the guy was like, you know, we're really interested. Um, waited and waited weeks and weeks and weeks were going by. We're still planning, planning, planning. There's articles being written that I'm doing this event at Jazz at Lincoln Center. Nobody, no one knows I don't have money. And wow. I'm just planning, planning, planning. <laughs> Literally three and a half weeks before the event was supposed to happen is when I got confirmation of sponsorship. Wow. wow. And I will never, ever, 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 ever forget that email that I got. And what that felt like for uh-huh, me. Uh-huh. And what that also meant to my team. Because yeah. then I told my team, yeah. guys, this is what just happened. You know? Uh-huh. And so <laughs> I just... And that's just like one story. Mm-hmm. I have so many of those stories. Like my entire company. HFR is something that God wants to happen. Because otherwise it makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just it just makes no sense. What you just said was very great because there's this pastor that I listened to and he said that faith cannot the minute faith makes sense to you, it's lost its God power. He said it cannot hit your sensory mechanisms because then you start figuring it out and you want to start manipulating faith to work according to how your mind sees things. Faith has to remain something that is a spiritual heart connection. It cannot hit your mind. The minute it makes sense to you and it becomes logical, it's no longer faith. And so for you saying it made no sense, it remained faith. It it may it makes no sense. That's a great story to to kind of close on on this podcast for <laughs> sure. Yeah, because we're going to have to go into po- into our next podcast yeah. and talk about what our faith does for other people. Why it's so important for people to activate faith. Right. How right. our faith opens doors for other people. Yeah. And we definitely have to segue this conversation. So, ladies, this this was definitely our intro <laughs> into the discussion on faith. And as you see, we're both very fired up about it because it is definitely the root to everything that we see, do, feel, hear, accomplish here in this world and um and it keeps us alive yeah it's incredible yeah. it's like the most incredible thing ever it's like a power that we don't use enough yeah it's like we don't really understand the power that's within us until we really activate our faith that's true like and we don't understand like what, what we can possibly, do and yeah, where faith can take us yeah part of that too is being able to connect when you connect with god and you understand the depth and the width and the vastness and the greatness of who God is, you understand your capacity in faith. I don't know about people who are in other quote unquote faiths, but I know our God, like as creator of heaven and earth, that's a robust capability. <laughs> that that guy is legit. So if we have belief in, and confidence and assurance in the one who can do all of that, and his power lives on the inside of us, we're, we're explosive. Yeah. All right, so we're wrapping this one up, but <laughs> some of our takeaways, ladies, that you, got, you have got to jot these down and you've got to tweet these and you've got to share these with your friends and family and your discussion groups and just share and talk about our number one. Faith is an action. Faith is an action, ladies. Without that work, there is no faith to it. Number two. It's an applied belief. It's an applied belief. If you don't believe, you don't have the faith. Number three. And when you're applying faith, you practically prepare for the things you believe in. Yes. So if you really believe that what you are called to do or accomplish is done by faith, you prepare as God is leading you to prepare. You do it practically. You ha- you don't just pie in the sky hope and sit at home praying. You actually go out and look and search and quest and, and map and connect with people. Yeah. Next, number four. 
Fear is a huge hindrance to faith. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> yes. If you don't know how to empower your fears or convert them, if you listen to them and hearken to them, completely hinders your faith. Number five. And, and life is just way too short to, to live without activated faith. Going back to that cemetery story. That <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That dash in the yes. middle on that tombstone yes. is everything. You're yes. gonna have to. We're gonna have to share your blog post on this on uh, Facebook as well. But that dash, what we do with that dash is that's our part. Absolutely, that's our part. And number six, and there is no lack. We're completely loaded with benefits. Yes. I love that. Absolutely, God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. So we have everything that we need. So we want to, at this point, give a special thanks and shout out to our booze. Thanks. Yes. We love you, Kwaku. Thank you, Rich. Yes. And to our families, Sam, Dilly, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, cousins, sisters. And baby love. Baby love. Everyone in between. And to our great girlfriends for trusting us as your go-to source for everything life, love, and laughter. Yes. So remember to check us out on Instagram. We are The Great Girlfriends there. On Facebook, we're also The Great Girlfriends. On Twitter, we're at the underscore great GFS. And tell all your friends to visit our website at thegreatgirlfriends.com. Please post your questions and share with your friends. And keep listening and keep being a a great great girlfriend. girlfriend. I'm Sybil. And I'm Brandis. And we're signing off. And guys, we know that ending is cheesy. It's cheesy. We feel like to do it. it.